snuck in right before halftime, and I wanted to make sure that everyone got a, got a chance to see our music director for the Conroe Symphony, Gary Leaves, will you come on up? Yeah. So, no, you just thought you were gonna get out of it, right? No, but I want Gary to just say a few words about the upcoming Conroe Symphony season. Gary. Sure. Uh, yeah. I think everybody probably saw the information out there, so we won't go over the dates. But um, the first concert is uh, with a Latin flair, our neighbors to the south, and you get into all of Venezuela and Cuba and some really great Latin music. A lot of wonderful dance music from those countries and some very romantic rhythms and, and, and just great styles. We've got that music, it's coming right now. Stephanie, our just played food a few minutes ago, is the Condo Symphony Librarian, and she was just telling me a couple of the pieces just arrived. So um, those pieces are, are wonderful, and we hope you can come see that. Uh, we'll have a guest soloist for that, and I know you'll enjoy her. Uh, the Christmas concert is just like you'd expect it to be. It's filled with wonder ho wonderful holiday favorites, and that'll be sure to please. Then for February, we've got, let me get my mind uh, yeah, here. here. No, no, I, I got this. <laughs> rodeo Roundup, yeah. because we have a rodeo here in Montgomery County, and we have a big one in Houston as well, and everybody knows Houston by our February rodeo schedule, so we're going to sit, play some cowboy and rodeo-themed music, some classical, some popular, and some from a few years ago, like Happy Trails to You. So those will be fun, and then the last concert is a tribute to all those wonderful space themes, Star Trek, Star Wars, and the title of the concert is Space, The Final Frontier. So if you like any of those science fiction movies, we've got it for you. And that'll be our season. We're still working on uh, what's going to happen after that. For many years, the symphony, I understand, has had a tradition of doing a patriotic concert in April, May, June-ish. And we have uh, partnered recently with the city of Kano to do the Stars and Stripes celebration. We're not sure we're continuing that with the city or not. We love our, our, our uh, relationship with the city and that's worked well. Uh, that, that was a very hot event this year. Imagine that, Southeast Texas in July in a record-breaking summer. So we may be back out on the stage in Heritage Park or we may be looking for a venue that will keep our musicians and you a little bit cooler. We're not sure. So you'll see that listed as a, start, uh, as a uh, patriotic concert and we're working diligently as we speak to try to figure out where and when that concert will be, but there will be a patriotic concert in the spring. And that rounds out our season. We're so glad you're here. I'm gonna go off script here just a little bit. Can you believe how much he's done to put this concert together? Let's have a round of applause for today. Bill, just the logistics of this and getting everybody together is really impressive and what a delightful afternoon of music. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Quite impressive. Let's hear it for me again. <laughs> we are so pleased to have Gary Leaves as our music director. I, I can't tell you how pleased we are to, that he has come and he's a perfect fit for Conroe. And so Gary, we are very glad to have you here in Conroe. Awesome, let's give him a hand. Okay, I'm going to call up our next players. Uh, Alicia Russell and Pam Youngblood, and they're going to perform a duet. And uh, Alicia, do you want to take the microphone and t tell us a little bit about what you're going to play? This is the second best known ragtime, The Entertainer. <laughs> and um, in looking up a few tidbits about The Entertainer by Scott Joplin, it's interesting to know the first recording was in 1928 on mandolin and guitar, which surprised me. Um, it was first sold, of course, on <coughs> piano rolls, but it first, per, per, first recorded on mandolin and guitar. It became so popular in the movie The Sting, and Marvin Hamlish's adaptation of it was number three on the pop charts. So uh, you all have heard it before. I hope we can do it justice. Um, Bill asked me to play a duet with him at last year's event. 
So I kind of did the same thing and asked Pam to play a duet with me this year. Roped her in. So uh, the the entertainer. back later in the program to perform with me the grand finale of the concert. <laughs> so you don't want to miss that. She didn't know. Little did she know when she got herself in, into this thing. Now, and also I do want to recognize her husband, Jeff Russell, who is, he's not really a page turner, he's a page catcher. Okay, because sometimes when the air conditioning gets going, the pages start blowing and Jeff catches them and brings them back to the camera. So, Jeff, thank you, thank you. And he's waving his hand back there. Okay, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna move on now and uh, hear uh, some more numbers from our San Antonio Ragtime Society folks. And so Brooks, who lives in Humble, Texas, with his wife Carmen, and they host uh, house concerts, and uh, they have some very talented and nationally known uh, ragtimers, uh, you know, come and perform in their lovely home. And uh, Brooks, start heading on up this way. So tell us what you're going to play next. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, we got to we got to do a few things like Bill said before. 
and we've missed our opportunity. But please thank Bill Thompson again. <laughs> well, thank you, Bill, for having, uh, allowing us to come back in. Thank you to the Conroe Symphony for allowing us to share our passion and our love of this wonderful music with you folks. And the last thank you goes to you. I wish you guys could stand here and see the smiles and see the happiness and see what ragtime music does. And I think one of the things that always inspired me about ragtime, and, and you've heard all different styles of music today, and I think that's what really sets ragtime different than a lot of music. If you go to a, a concert in the symphony, which I love classical music, and you have 50 piano players play Rhapsody of Blue, it's gonna sound about the same with most of them. And the neat thing with ragtime is it lets you be expressive. And I think that was one of the things that attracted me to it. Monty mentioned earlier that, I don't know what all that A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. I just play it Brooks' way, which is B. <laughs> but the thing that's neat about it is you get to improvise, you get to add things, you get to do, you know, you can make it your own. And I think that's one of the things that I love the most about this music. Uh, I was very fortunate. I'm a college dropout. I, uh, no, I am. I, I, I dropped out of school to go try to make a musical career playing the piano. And I'll share a little tidbit with you. Do you know how you make a million dollars playing the piano? Start with five million. <laughs> There's just no way to make a living playing the piano. And uh, the piano's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. I've met my beautiful wife. I've, I've, I've met the, the people I've employed with. I've met people all over the world. And one of the neatest guys that I had inspiration from was uh, the piece I'm going to play for you next. I'm zooming ahead to 1959. And I met a fellow at the first Ragtime Festival I went to. His name was Traber Tishner. Now, Traber is a unique name. And I found out later from his daughter, who's a wonderful Ragtime countess, it's just Robert Backward. <laughs> I don't think I can never figure that out. <laughs> But in the, the late 1800s, Trevor was from St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. I'm also from St. Joseph, Missouri. It's a small town about an hour north of Kansas City. And Trevor wrote some of those beautiful rags. And he took in a very young ragtime piano player when I was in my early 20s, uh, playing at the first, uh, second Scott Joplin Festival. It was around 1983. And uh, this was one of his famous pieces. It's in a book called They All Played Ragtime. And it's called the Chestnut Valley Rag. And the Chestnut Valley was, I don't know who mentioned Bordellos earlier, but that was the sporting district. That's where this music came from. It was in the casinos, the barrel houses, uh, houses of negotiated effects. It was in different places. And, uh, this, was a, this was a unique, uh, you're going to tell that tomorrow, aren't you? I love that story. And anyway, this is a delightful tune. It's folk rag. It's a different style. One of the things of Missouri rag time was, they take it into the key of F and they make it kind of a blues feel. So this will be something you've never heard probably before, but it's one of my favorite tunes. It's called the Chestnut Valley Rack.
say this ever since I heard Victor Borges say this a long time ago. For my last and final piece, <laughs> again, I'm very appreciative to uh, the Conroe Symphony and Bill and the guys for inviting us out to share our love of music today. One of the neat things that uh, you know, one of the fellows maybe mentioned earlier, a lot of this music wasn't written down. Uh, a lot of it was written under pseudo. Uh, there wasn't a lot of people that knew about it, you know, 120 years ago, other than I don't think so. And one of the fun things that we have in our uh, group over in San Antonio is we look for obscure rags. We look for different things. You know, Bill was talking about the big three. I'm going to play a piece from a guy that only wrote three pieces. And that it was almost kind of like a one-hit wonder. And it, it makes you wonder how many of pieces that were out there. My dear friend, Monty Safer, found this piece of music uh, for me years ago over in San Antonio. And I don't know whether he thought it suited my personality, so I'm pretty shy and laid back and quiet <laughs> and has his rag time. And uh, I'm going to give it a shot. I do have a challenge. All the pianists today, you can notice there's three pedals on the piano. The right is the sustain pedal. This one is really sensitive and it stays down a lot longer than we're used to when we practice. And you can tell that I have probably more notes that are on the piece of that are there, so it kind of sustains it, so I'm crazy. So uh, I'm going to give a shot at this. This tune was written in 1913, kind of has a circus feel to it, and it's a great closing tune. The Lion King.
Brooks didn't mention this, but he actually is a lion tamer. <laughs> That's one of the topics. All right, Monty will be up next. Now, Monty, I may have been uh, mispronouncing your last name. How do you, how do, what is the authentic pronunciation of your last name? It depends. It depends <laughs> on what hemisphere you're in? Okay. The name was originally came out of, the name originally came out of France somewhere, so they pronounced it Soufre, and put the R and the E back the other way. Uh, my ancestors then went to Northern Ireland and um, pronounced it Suffer. So you just say the word Suffer and then you just sort of let an N fall out and you got it pretty close. Okay. <laughs> But Suffern, Suffern, and there's a township called Suffern, or Suffern actually, on the New York, um, New Jersey border. And we went there just a few months back now. Oh, that's right, I've seen it. Yeah. And that was some of my forefathers. Some came to America, and then a few generations later, some came to Australia. So we got a connection with the land, as they say. All right, enough of that. We're here for rag time. Um, Susie, my wife, reminded me that there's been a lot of rag time written uh, since the original rag time era. The original rag time era was sort of the 1890s to 1920 thereabouts. And, but there's been people writing rag time. Brooks just played us one from Trey Batishna, probably 1950s or 60s. I'm practicing up a folk, a folk rag now by uh, Tom Shea. Tom Shea. Um, <coughs> it's a bit tricky too. But that's not what I'm going to play. I'm going to play something <laughs> by Gail and Milk, so. so we've already heard uh, Mandy and Abby Joe play uh, The Creeks of Missouri, written by Gail and Wilkes, probably in about 1980. So, like I say, well beyond the original ragtime era. I'm going to play one that he wrote as uh, sort of a eulogy for the original ragtime folk who have passed away. And by. This is called The Last of the Ragtime Pioneers by Galen Wilkes. What else do I have to say about it? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think, I think we'll just get to it. It's, oh, sorry, I'm playing that, this today. Today. In <laughs> Australia, I say goodbye. <laughs> but not here. Um, we, the ragtime community lost a stalwart a few months back, a guy called Max Murat, and he's been just a, a wonderful person. I've been at concerts with him, but I've never specifically met him. So that's one of my great uh, losses in life, not to have met Max. And I'm going to play this in memory of Max. And just as one last point on that, I know Bill said not to take more than a minute to introduce each song. <laughs> um, someone has found a series of uh, TV programs made in the 1960s, and it's called just, I think, just Ragtime, or the History of Ragtime. The Ragtime Era. The Ragtime yeah. Era by Max Murat. Mm -hmm. It's 12 episodes. It looks like it's 1960s. The TV picture's square. But I think if you Google it, you'll find it. They've released it since he uh, since he's passed away. And I've watched three or four of those episodes. They're really great. If you can put up with a cigar about this long sticking out of his mouth. Part of the deal. Okay. So they call it Last of the Ragtime Pioneers.
now going to play what was probably one of the earlier novelty piano pieces. This was called Nola, written by Felix Hahn. It was written, I believe, around 1913 or 14, so a little bit before some of Brooks's says concrete fireworks stuff. And Nola manages to sort of bridge the divide into classical music a little bit. It's sort of a ragtime and a novelty ragtime piece, but a lot of um, piano teachers like to use this to stretch their students a little bit. So this is Nola. You might have noticed when I played the um, champagne rag, I really don't like my two hands getting mixed up with each other. So I tend to lift things an octave from time to time. And so this version of Nola will sound a little different to others that you may have heard before, because I just play it up an octave and then my hands don't get mixed up with each other. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> Familiar, you know, it's one of those pieces that you've heard before. You probably didn't really know the name of it, right? But it's been used all through the years, maybe in movies and cartoons and things, but wonderful piece. Thank you, Monty. All right, Jack, you're, you're back up along with Frank. And um, so tell us what your, what, what your next two pieces are gonna be here. And we've got your light now to where it's not a disco strobe light. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> the next two pieces I'm going to play are Joplin works, and uh, 
it kind of borderlines on classical. These are waltzes. And uh, during this era, the, the ballroom dancing craze was pretty popular. So all of the, the publishers at that time wanted waltzes to be included in their works and the composition. So Scott Joplin got in the act and he composed several waltzes. I'm going to play this one called Beth, Bethina. Uh, it was 1914, okay. Uh, and uh, it's uh, kind of a sad note because uh, he was married uh, to a lady named Freddie and about a month after their marriage, she died. Uh, and so we think there's probably some uh, sadness in this piece that came from that. This is a uh, Bethina by Scott Joplin.
this is another waltz <coughs> composed in 1901 in St. Louis when they were publishing out of St. Louis. Uh, it's called Augustana Club. And, you know, it's very popular back in those days to have dance clubs. And Joplin got his start at the Maple Leaf Club in Sedalia, Missouri. So uh, he was so successful, they, they moved the whole shebang to St. Louis. <laughs> and uh, started publishing there. So this piece is called the Augustana Club, Augustan, I'm sorry, Club, a dance club probably in, in St. Louis. We're not really sure <laughs> where it was located. It was 1901, so it's probably not there anymore. <laughs>
Thank you, Jack. You know, Scott Joplin played not just, or he wrote not only rags, uh, but uh, obviously waltzes. We just heard two of them, beautiful waltzes. He wrote marches. He wrote many different types of music. He wrote an opera, Trimonisha. And you can find that on YouTube, I believe. I was fortunate to, with, with my friend Gary here, who's on the front row, we were at the premiere production of the opera at Miller Theater in Houston in 1975. And it was a triumph. I, you know, I still get chills when I think about that evening because an opera that had been written some 60 years previously that had really never been heard and, and the composer had died about 55 years before it, and to see this triumphant you know, production and with all the singing and dancing, I mean, it, it was just you know, tremendous and it just made me feel like, you know, I wish Scott Joplin could have seen this, but it was really a vindication of his work. He labored so hard on that opera and it was his dream, but he did not live to see it on stage they did a run through of it so i i'll go on and on about it but look it up on uh youtube i think it's there and it's a it's a video of the houston opera uh you know production and so check it out if you haven't seen it it's wonderful music in it wonderful all right now i'm going to give a 30 minute turn no i'm not <laughs> but i did want to mention you know jack one of the other pieces that he played was the silver swan rag that's a very interesting story uh, about that because it was not published during Joplin's lifetime. It was, it was discovered on a piano roll. And, uh, and, it, and, you know, it has been, you know, the experts have listened to it and, and you know, it had the name Scott Joplin on the roll. And it's, it is thought that he may have played the role and, you know, they punched the role while he was playing it. We're not sure about that, but it's a beautiful piece. And, it, it was first published in this book in 1970 uh, by the New York Public Library, and it's called The Collected Works of Scott Joplin. And my parents gave me this in 1970. Uh, and, uh, you know, it had the first publication of the Silver Swan Rag. The, um, and, and this book in 1970 cost $50, and that's when, back when $50 was $50, okay? But anyway, um, also, one of the interesting things about that book is that when they put it together, well, it's called the collected works of Scott Joplin, not the complete works, because it's not complete, and the reason is that a couple of the publishers who owned the rights to a few of the rags did not give their you know, uh, 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 permission to include those rags. And so Rose Leaf Rag, the one that I played with Stephanie, was not in this book. Searchlight Rag, and one other one, I can't think of it all, but there were three rags. Now, if you go to a bookstore or uh, order, now you can get all of the collected works. They're all in one book because they worked out the legal issues. But in this book, it, it is missing those three rags, uh, which is unfortunate, but they did get that problem taken care of later. All right. Well, that ends my sermon for today. <laughs> now, for our grand finale, uh, Alicia, will you please come forward? I beg your pardon. Okay. <laughs> You, you just stay where you are. Uh, Belinda and Stuart get to go again. Yes. So, uh, Belinda, are you playing a solo now? I'm going to play Lemon Slice by uh, Larissa Mikachov. Mikachov. Okay. Let's hear it for Belinda. <laughs>
Thank you, Belinda. Larissa Negachoff is a very talented lady. I have met her. Uh, she has been in the San Antonio Society, as I think Monty mentioned, uh, and Brooks, and uh, she's written some wonderful ragtime music. She lives on the West Coast now, and, uh, but, uh, and she does come back to the area from time to time. But uh, Belinda, great job on that. And now Stuart, I'll let you uh, introduce your piece. Yes, and uh, that piece that uh, Belinda played is contemporary. It was probably only written 12 years ago. Oh, wait, so uh, 2008. Uh, I'm going to play another piece by a female ragtime composer. Um, there were a good number of female ragtime composers who wrote some wonderful music. There was only one downside. Uh, in almost every case that I've looked at, when they got married, they stopped composing, just completely. So this is by Grace Bolin. Um, she wrote her first piece when she was 14 years old. Uh, this one she wrote when she was 17, and it's probably her best known piece called The Smoky Topaz. Um, she actually lived till 1974, and uh, she was actually buried in the cemetery at Longview, Texas. So, but anyway, this is Smoky Topaz by Grace Bowler. Texas. 
Or did she just no. wind up in Texas? Yeah, she wound up in Texas. Okay, okay. She was born in Missouri. But born in Missouri, okay. I don't know, I don't know that I've ever heard that one. That's great. Now, uh, Alicia is going to entertain you with a joke while I go back to the back of the room and, and get my music. Hold on a minute. Not really, no. <laughs> Gonna run. He's gonna oh, run and get that. We're playing the queen rag. Yes. You probably have something to say about that. I have a 30-minute sermon about this rag. No, uh, it's not about the queen that we might think of. It's about a steamboat called the Queen. All right. So, and it's by Floyd Willis. And you know. The town of Willis, okay? It's not the same guy. <laughs> you yeah, thought it was the same guy, right? Okay, no, it's not. But Floyd Willis wrote this in 1911, and so uh, Alicia and I will attempt to do this this duet uh, arrangement. Some of these internet uh, arrangements uh, have to be heavily edited by the player before we play them. I mean, we found some little glitchy errors, but I think I think we've caught them all, but if you hear any errors, well, if you hear any funny notes, it's not an error from us. <laughs> it's, it's from the internet. <laughs>
start together and end together, it's all good. <laughs> it's, it's all good. So, now that's going to conclude our planned program, and we're, we're done about uh, 11 minutes early. So I have planned an 11-minute uh, sermon. No, <laughs> But we really thank you all for being here. We're going to let you go early. Uh, get out of school early is always good, right? Yay! Brandon, Brandon knows that. All right. So, but really, thank you all for being here. We hope you have enjoyed the show. Have you enjoyed the show? Good, good. Good. Okay. And um, if you haven't had a chance to buy your season ticket, please check out the table on your way out. Uh, of course, we'll be selling season tickets, you know, for the next months and so forth. So this is not the last chance, but this is the best chance. Okay. I'm going to say it's the best chance. But um, we, we hope to do this as an annual thing. I kind of called it a somewhat annual because we missed the COVID year and, and missed a couple of years in there. But uh, I'd like to particularly thank the players. Let's hear it again for the players today. I hope you get to chat with them before they head out because, you know, several of them are from way out of town and uh, made a special effort to be here. So I hope you'll say hi to them and tell them how much you uh, like the music. So, uh, again, thank you all for being here, and you're dismissed. Thanks. <laughs>